In this video, we're going to show how you can use the user progress API available on Drupal.org with the requirement dashboard API. Uh, so these are two APIs that were developed for Elms. But the nice thing, because they've been built for Drupal, they work in any system and any site. So originally they were created, and we'll go to the Drupal.org pages so you can see these. Uh, so we have uh, user progress, and I'll move the bar down so you can see the address. Uh, so user progress API, you know, if you just do this base thing, it was made for the Elms distribution, but it works with any Drupal site um, in six and should work in seven, although it's just a direct port. Uh, so we're going to use this in conjunction with the requirement dashboard API. Now, requirement dashboard, uh, if you're familiar with Drupal, uh, there is a kind of requirement dashboard area already called the status page. What this lets you do is not only define things to show up on requirement dashboards, but also allow you to define new dashboards that you want to present to people. Uh, so that was probably a really confusing statement, but let's show what this actually ends up looking like when you use the two together. So I'm going to go to site building and modules and show what these two are that we're talking about today. So scroll down in here. And you see I have a lot of stuff going on here. <laughs> so let's do requirement dashboard. So you see, when you get requirement dashboard, you have three modules. There's organic groups based requirement dashboard. There's requirement dashboard in general, which just gives you the API. And then there's a system level requirement dashboard. So I don't have organic groups on this system. So for this demonstration, we'll have these two on. And then also user progress comes with this integration baked in. So User Progress API comes with the generalized framework for tracking actions within Drupal. It has support for Smart Builder, which is a third party um, uh, learning design focused uh, flash generator, basically, uh, that we use for some cool interactive stuff. Um, user Progress Requirement Dashboard, that gives you the integration between these two projects. And then there's also the ability to track uh, JW Player events which we're, we're starting to roll out in the near future, uh, and user progress content. So this is just to track pages. And as it says, it's lighter weight than Drupal's core method, at least in, in 6. Um, so these are all available in 6 and 7. I'm just showing you one of our courses today. So once you turn all these on, uh, then obviously the next thing you say is, well, what do I do with this stuff? So I'm going to go into site configuration and First thing we're going to do is go to user progress. And so user progress to utilize the content feature, so there's different types of activities to track. Uh, if you have JW player, you can have that show up in here, uh, as well as smart builder activities. So this will give you a unique identifier for when you're building uh, smart builder applications and things like that to reference off of. Um, there's no group, no organic groups hasn't been activated, but if it was, then this would provide support for that so that you could you know, for for example, just track page views within certain groups. Uh, obviously, that has a lot more connotation in Elms as a system, but you could use it in things like OpenHM or whatever you wanted. It was organic group space. So you'll see I've just created a content view uh, because there's no organic groups connotation. This will just track content view on any page. So that's the first step. The next step is to go to administer and then user management and we're going to go to permissions. And so there's a couple of areas in permissions that you need to focus on. Uh, the first is associated with requirement dashboard. So we need to say who's allowed to actually view this material. So, so we have requirement dashboard module. View system requirements dashboard. So right now the admin can see that. And let's give instruction designers the ability to we also have new user progress requirement dashboard. And so that's the integration with user progress. So user progress defines its own dashboard, which is per page, um, so that you can get statistics off of just that node. So we're gonna leave this on for admins and instructional designers. These are more overview types of information things, stuff you don't want your users to see, uh, but are really good for you know helping to aggregate analytics in this instance. Uh, so User progress module, you can see there's a couple of different settings here. You have the ability to get the user progress record, which you know we're just going to get the admin. We're not doing anything too dynamic. 
um, in the case of something like a smart builder application, where the application needs to be able to get information from the user, you would set up the different roles that should be allowed to push data um, back and forth between uh, user progress API. Um, so for this example, we just have set user progress record, which basically means when you go to a piece of content, all authenticated users are going to be tracked. Um, you could set this to you know just certain roles if I just wanted to say okay I don't care about student page counts I could do that and then more generally in case you're using other things you need to also say whether or not data can flow at all so uh, so that's all you have to do in setting those up so now let's go and see where this these show up in the system so oops let's see the button at the top and go to the front page so. The first type of dashboard we're going to look at is this actual page. So you'll see user progress stats now shows up if you have access to it. So go to that this page. We can see that there have been five page views on this specific node, and that two of them are by different visitors. So very basic information, right? But what requirement dashboard is effectively giving you, um, and I'll open up the reports, is if you go into a typical Drupal status report page. You'll see things like PHP version, whether or not you have stuff turned on, um, and whether or not you're up to date, right? Basically, it lets you replicate these types of pages anywhere through your Drupal system, is what requirement dashboard is giving you. So, so we have user progress stats here, and now we have six page views because I'm telling it to just track any visit to this page. So I can keep bouncing back and forth, so seven, eight, and so on. Um, but still, unique visitors. There's only two. Um, going to an, a larger dashboard. Uh, there's the system stats dashboard that I turned on, and so system stats is going to give me an aggregate of everything. So you see, there's actually four unique page views across all our material since I turned this on for this demo, and the page views is 27, and so. Hopefully, as I would refresh this, you know, over time, I'll start to see more and more. You also get overview information in this case, like, hey, you only have the content one uh, activated. If you had other, you know, APIs uh, turned on in terms of requirement dashboard, you could see that data show up here. Um, Elms has these defined all throughout it so that you can get lots of different stats. Um, but these are just some example ones that work pretty easily in any Drupal system. If you have more questions about the API uh, or any of the APIs created as a result of the Elms project, um, make sure to ask questions either here or on Twitter or you know, on the API pages themselves. So they are pretty flexible APIs for defining new actions and, and aggregating analytic, analytics together.